Hey guys, welcome to ESO Vault. I'm here in the Infinite Archive, hanging out with my little tentacle buddy. But hey, today I've got a Warden build for doing the Archive that I think is a winner. I got to Arc 6 with this, and I'm saying a lot of that is the build. If you've watched the channel and you've seen glimpses of my gameplay, you know it can be, well, less than stellar at times. I was doing the Archive on my Sorcerer, and I used him to get all the unlocks, but I wasn't satisfied with the setup I was running on him, especially since I couldn't get past the fourth and final incarnation of Thoad at the end of Arc 4. I ended up switching to my Warden and setting him up to do the job. On the very first run, I got to Arc 6. I never took my Warden into the Archive, and I was literally leveling skills I had never used during the run. Now, I'm not trying to pump up my balloon here. All I'm saying is that the build is pretty solid. And I have an ace I'm holding that is really strong supporting evidence of that. I'm not going to give it away just yet, but I'll say that I made a mistake in the build. And I did my entire run with that mistake in place. When I saw what I'd done, I laughed out loud. You may too when I show you. I'm going to do this video pretty much like my other build videos, but I'm going to add in some supplemental information about the archive and how players that are running it with any success at all are doing it. Alright, let's look at the character sheet. My character I used as an orc, and I think any number of races would be fine here. Nord may be a really good choice because of the racial passive Rugged, which gives them a bonus to armor. I'll talk about why shortly. I'm using Bewitched Sugar skills as my buff food, which gives bonuses to all three attributes, plus health recovery. This is obviously an Oak and Soul build, judging by the long list of buffs. I'm using the Steed Mundus Stone. That's a weird one, eh? The Steed gives bonuses to movement speed and health recovery and why I use that will be revealed shortly. Up top, you can see all my attribute points are in health, giving me 40,000 points of health. First secret of the Infinite Archive is that almost all successful builds start life as a tank, and you can see I've got very high resistances at 28,000. That's the second secret of the Infinite Archive. It's all heavy armor all the way. Other than that, the stats look pretty normal. Whoa, wait a second. What's going on with that health recovery? 5,000 points of health recovery? And that's the main trick this build uses. Very high health recovery. When that's buffed, it can go over 7,000. And all Infinite Archive builds use some tricks or gimmicks, whatever you want to call them. I actually got this one from Hack the Minotaur. Not that he needs a plug from me. He has a great channel. Only he was using this on a Sorcerer. There's an armor set I'll show you that combined with high resistance gives me that high health recovery. I watched what Hack was doing and I thought, that's pretty cool. But what if I use this on a Warden? Wardens already have their own gimmick for high health recovery. So I tried it, and it worked great. Okay, the basic setup is in place, so what about skills? First thing I do going into a fight is cast Lotus Blossom. Heavy attacks restore 4,000 health points while this is active, and this is a heavy attack build. Next I'll summon my Netch with Blue Betty. This gives me Magicka back over its duration while removing negative effects from me. And this is basically a Magicka powered Warden, even though I'm specced into health. It's tough to run out of Magicka making heavy lightning staff attacks, but the Archive is tough, so every little bit helps. Next I'll use Crystallized Slab, which gives me a huge damage shield against projectiles. I'm going to be spamming this constantly in the Archive. I know you're thinking that's only good against projectiles, but there are almost always projectiles. And a lot of the time, that's what's killing you. Best thing about this is that it reflects those projectiles back at the attackers. Okay, next I'll use Arctic Blast, which is a burst heal that also damages and stuns enemies and inflicts them with a chilled status effect. Another secret of the Endless Archive, status effects are king. Most, if not all, successful builds work by amplifying status effect damage. That's accomplished by having a build that's set up to proc status effects and by amplifying them with buffs you'll get in the Archive. If you're doing it right, and your run is lucky as far as the visions you get, status effect damage will eclipse all other damage from your build. Next I have Elemental Susceptibility from the Destruction Staff skill line. Normally we think of this because it applies Major Breach. The status effect damage from this is small, but with the right visions, damage from this becomes tremendous, and you'll be putting this on as many enemies as possible. Last on this one bar build is the Eternal Guardian, the Bear. The bear will take some heat off you with adds and even bosses, and the bear is tough. It rarely dies, and when it does, this morph of the skill will cause it to respawn once per minute. Most importantly, my ultimate is going to remain full, and that allows me to use the Warden's innate ability to have high health recovery. I'll show you when I get to champion points. 
that's it for skills. There's no rotation here to talk about. I just keep attacking and queuing up other skills as needed. In most of the fight, I'm going to be spamming crystallized slab between heavy attacks. A lot of the time, there aren't even any projectiles. But you never know. There are a lot of things that register as projectiles. And in those brutal ad fights that really kick in in the fourth arc, this skill was saving my ass. The only real decision making comes in when there are hard hitting melee attacks. In that case, I find myself spamming my heal, arctic blast, and alternating with that and crystallized slab. Okay, let's look at the gear. First, I have the Sergeant's Mail set, and I'm using a precise lightning staff. Sergeant's Mail buffs heavy attacks and is the primary set in all heavy attack builds. Now, normally I would use a second set that also buffs heavy attacks, but here I'm going to give that up for more survivability. Usually I'd run a shot glyph on the lightning staff, but I'm going to forego the extra damage from off balance and run a fire enchantment. I want to get fire damage into the build so I can proc the burning status effect. Status effects are king here. Next is the Alessian Order set, and this comes from Cyrodiil, but you can buy it from Guild Traders. This is the survivability part of the build. This set buffs armor and health, but most of all it cranks up my health recovery to obscene highs. This works in conjunction with heavy armor, which is a must in the archive anyway. Of course, I've still got my slime crawl arm tops for extra critical chance. Finally, there's the Oaken Soul Ring, which is in the trade it drops in, which is fine. This gives me that long list of buffs you saw. Most importantly, it adds damage to heavy attacks with the Empower buff. The other jewelry is from the Sergeant's Mail set, and it's in the Bloodthirsty trade. Before I move on, I should say that the gear on the body should be heavy and in the Divine's trade. I may have a mismatched trade in there, but with these sets, heavy is the only option, so it's hard to screw that up. That's it for gear. So with my five-piece sets, I have on one offensive and one defensive set. I end up being very tanky, but I still have an ability to do damage. All right, let's look at the champion points. The blue slottables are weapons expert, deadly aim, reaving blows, and wrathful strikes. Reaving blows is another health recovery tool. It heals me while I'm doing damage. Over in the red tree, I have strategic reserve. Strategic reserve gives me health recovery based on how much ultimate I have. With the bear, my ultimate is always full, so I get massive health recovery from this. Combined with the Alessi and Aura set, Reaving Blows, and my Lotus skill, the resulting health recovery is tremendous. Don't forget I also have my Burst Heal, Arctic Blast, for when things get really dicey. Rounding out the Red Tree are Rejuvenation, Fortified, and Boundless Vitality. Before I go, I want to talk a little about the Archive and what you'll run into, and what you should be on the lookout for. First, you're going to need to do the side quest minigames and win them, because you need these achievements to unlock things like Stronger Verses and Vision and extra light, and most importantly, a third choice of verses and visions. You need a third choice of visions so you have the best possible chance of getting buffs that you have to have to make any real headway in the archive. These are my visions from the run at the beginning and end of the video. They're not bad, but they could be better. I got two stacks of focused efforts, which is the most important vision to get. This offensive vision increases my status effect damage, the more the better. I also got Scorching Support, which periodically leaves an area of lava on the ground. That's a winner. I had good luck with Versus in the final fight by getting Fire Orb, which does a ton of damage. But sometimes you make your own luck. I got that as an extra verse by reading an offensive verse scroll at the beginning of the fight. I find that the defensive verse scrolls are largely a waste of time, unless I drew a really good offensive verse already. In the critical Thoat fight at the end of an arc, it's not a bad plan to read one of those offensive verse scrolls. There are a lot more things I could say about the archive, but this isn't a how-to on the archive itself. At the end of the day, it's a build video, and this build helped me get through the archive and get my achievement for beating all four incarnations of Thoat Replicanum. I also managed to get into the top 10 on the leaderboard based on one run on this character. Now this isn't a flex, but if I'm doing a build video for the Infinite Archive, I have to give that build some validity. I'm going to play that ace I've been holding now. Remember I told you I made a mistake in the build? Well that mistake was that I had no skill points in the Destruction Staff Tri-Focus Passive. That's the passive that gives the Lightning Staff 100% splash damage to enemies near my target. That's a huge amount of damage left on the table. I thought something wasn't quite right with the damage numbers as they flew up my screen, but enemies seemed powerless to budge my health bar, so I pressed on. Afterward, when I was looking things over, I saw what I had done, and I laughed at what an idiot I was. 
Of course, I put the two skill points in right away, and I'm ready for the next run. But there's some additional validation for the build if you need any. Arc 6 with no lightning staff splash damage. So if you're looking for a warden build to run the archive, I feel like there's no way you can go wrong with this one. Especially if you run the archive with a friend, which is the best way to do it. There are no difficulty settings in the archive, so it will be much easier to do. Team up with a buddy, run it solo, but get in there and get your achievements, house furnishings, and whatever else you want. But most of all, have fun. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. For those that are already subscribed, thank you very much. And a special thanks to those of you that have left encouraging comments. I'm Centurion, and you've been watching ESO Vault. Have a great day and enjoy your adventures in Tamriel.